So today I'm going to be ranking the restricted Pokemon for Series 11 because that starts in about a week. Well, it starts in exactly a week. So I'm going to be ranking all of the Series 11 restricted Pokemon based off of obviously how they're going to do in Series 11 now that Dynamax is back. So with Dynamax being back, some of these Pokemon get a significant boost versus how they are in Series 10. In Series 10, Kyogre and Zacian really shine. And it's tough for some of these Pokemon to, to be able to hang with Kyogre and Zacian. But with the Dynamax being back, with all these Pokemon being able to Dynamax other than Zacian and Zamazenta, that makes some of these Pokemon much better and a lot more usable. So let's take a look at the list here. I'm just going to go in order. So you can see they're listed in order of their generation. So just going to go in order and list these Pokemon. I have an S tier, an A plus tier, because I think there's a couple Pokemon that are a little bit better than A, but they're not as good as the S Pokemon. And then I have an F tier, and I might as well actually start there before I even do Mewtwo with these two. These are the two that go in the F tier, right? They're pretty much useless. They don't really do anything. So I'm just going to throw those two there right away, and then we'll get going with Mewtwo. So Mewtwo, I'm torn between C and D tier. I don't want to make the Mewtwo lovers too mad, so I guess I'll throw Mewtwo in the C tier. But Mewtwo just isn't very good because of, you know, Calyrex Shadow Rider. And now that Zacian is out, and obviously it wouldn't do well against Eveltal. So it doesn't have very good abilities. It's slower than both Calyrex Shadow and Zacian, so it doesn't outspeed everything. Its typing isn't great, right? Psychic doesn't do great into very many of these restricted Pokemon. So it's just not very good. I know that it has a huge special attack. It's pretty fast. It has a good move pool. But overall, it's just not a good Pokemon. If, if you want to go with a Psychic type, you'd be much better off going with Calyrex Shadow. Yeah, as much as I like Mewtwo, it's just not that great these days. Lugia, I'm going to put in the same tier. Lugia has a better ability than Mewtwo with multi-scale. It has the damage of an attack when Lugia is at full hit points. So Lugia also has some really good general bulk. But again, Lugia is a psychic type. It is better, in my opinion, than Mewtwo because it's at least also flying and it has a better ability. But um, it's still not that great. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage. So people have been running it with Calm Mind and then Aeroblast. And I think people are usually using Earth Power so that it can deal damage to a Zacian. And the Calm Mind set is done pretty good. If you put a weakness policy on it and you're able to get off Calm Mind, now Lugia can start doing some damage and it's really bulky. Oh, and it gets Recover. So it's a decent Pokemon. If you get the right build and the right support around it, it can be good. But obviously not a great Pokemon. Ho-Oh is an interesting one. I'm going to put it in the B tier. I know some people really like Ho-Oh. It does pretty good damage into some of the better Pokemon like Zacian. So it's a pretty solid Pokemon. It's also one that's really bulky. So it's one that in the Dynamax format, maybe you can use it more due to its general bulk. It also gets Recover. I know people are using it with or they were using Whirlwind on it, because that's a good move. Stop people from getting up Trick Rooms. It's great against Xerneas, because if Xerneas sets up, then you can just Whirlwind it out, and now its Power Herb is gone. So Ho-Oh definitely has playability. It's a pretty solid Pokemon. I haven't used it personally, but I know people who have used it really like it and have done some good things with it. So next is Kyogre. Kyogre is obviously in the S tier, right? Kyogre is one of the best, if not the best, restricted Pokemon. With Kyogre being able to set up the rain when it enters the battle, that boosts all of its water attacks, and it already has a huge special attack to begin with, and it gets Water Spout, which is one of the best moves in the game. So it just is able to do so much damage if you don't have an answer for it, and you know, if you're not able to stop it from going first, it can just sweep your team in two turns. So Kyogre, obviously an S-tier Pokemon, arguably the best. You have to have counters for it. And, you know, it's a Pokemon that's done really well in all the major tournaments. 
yeah, an obvious S tier Pokemon. I'm going to put Groudon in the A plus tier. I think this is a really good Pokemon, but it's not as good as Kyogre. But you're going to see this a lot, especially now that Dynamax is back. You're going to see all kinds of Groudon Sun teams with Charizard, Venusaur. It's obviously a Pokemon that did really well back in Series 8 when Restricteds were allowed with Dynamax. So popular set is Swords Dance, and then people Dynamax it. People will also run it under Trick Room, so they'll make a bulkier Groudon. Still running the Swords Dance, set up Trick Room, and then they'll have good support Pokemon like Umbreon does super well with Groudon because its Moonlight heals even more when the sun is up. And Umbreon is just a great support, support Pokemon to begin with. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with Groudon. You can play faster with Sun Team, such as, you know, using the Venusaur and the Charizard. You can play slower, setting up Trick Room, and using its bulk. So it's a versatile Pokemon. It's obviously really good. And, you know, a good one that you can use against Kyogre. Because if your opponent leads Kyogre and you're able to switch in Groudon and change the Sun to being up, you know, that can be a good way to handle a Kyogre. So, obviously, this is a very good Pokemon in this format. And with Dynamax, Groudon can be really dangerous. Next Pokemon, Rayquaza. I'm going to put Rayquaza in the C tier. It's not amazing, but where you could use Rayquaza for is shutting down these two Pokemon. So, its ability shuts off all weather effects. So, it ignores the rain, and the sun. So it's a great way to shut down these two Pokemon. But other than that, it's just not a great Pokemon. I made a team back in Series 8 where I made a special attacking Rayquaza because its physical attack and special attack are exactly the same. And people are typically expecting Rayquaza to have physical attacks. So they'll lead Intimidate users against it. And then I'll just Dynamax it and hit them with you know, if, if it's Incineroar, hit it with a Max Quake, and then just is going to knock it out. So it can be really good. The problem with Rayquaza is it's pretty frail, and it has four times weakness to ice. So if you get hit with an ice-type attack, you pretty much die. It makes it hard to Dynamax it. You got to have the right support around it. If you do have the right support, it could be a pretty good Pokemon. It's, it's great at switching in and catching your opponent off guard and dealing with Kyogre and Groudon. But it just isn't amazing. You have to really get a good build around it to make it work. You can make it work. Yeah, it's just not outstanding. Next Pokemon, Dialga. This thing is in the A plus tier. This thing does super well with Dynamax, especially under Trick Room. So this is a Pokemon that's super bulky and has a super high special attack. And it's got a pretty good typing. It's only weak to ground and fighting moves. So if you put a weakness policy on it and make it super bulky, set up a trick room, Dialga can be super hard to deal with. This is definitely one of the better Pokemon back in Series 8, just because it's so hard to take down. So if you put a weakness policy on it, your opponent pretty much has to hit it with super effective moves to knock it out. So they're going to set off its weakness policy. The other great thing about Dialga is its steel type. And it gets access to Earth Power. So if you Dynamax it and you do Max Quake and Max Steel Spike, that's going to boost its special defense for the Max Quake. Boosts physical defense with the Max Steel Spike. Now it's even bulkier yet. So it's just really hard to deal with. If you let it get set up and let it get rolling, it can just, yeah, roll through your team and do extremely well. So it's a Pokemon that you definitely need to watch out for. Palkia, I have in the B tier. Palkia is solid. It's good under Trick Room. It has a good special attack. It's got a pretty good typing being a water and dragon type. So the dragon type takes away those water weaknesses. So it's going to take neutral damage from electric and grass. From what I remember, it's very specially defensive. So yeah, Palkia has got a pretty good special defense and just really good general bulk. 100 for defense, 90 for hit points. So this is another one that if you use under Trick Room, it's got a really high special attack. Um, it can be a really good Pokemon. It's just, it's not as good as Dialga. Um, Dialga's got, in my opinion, better typing, better moveset. But Palkia's still really good. You can use it similar to a Dialga under Trick Room. Yeah, it's just not quite as good, in my opinion. 
All right, so next is Giratina, if I'm saying that properly. I am by no means a master of pronouncing Pokemon's names. But Giratina is definitely, in my opinion, in the D tier. It's just not very good. It has great bulk, but it has base 90 speed, and its moveset just isn't that great. You know, this is one where maybe if it was a lower speed, like in the 30s or 40s, and if it had better support moves, maybe it could be a pretty good Pokemon. But being a base 90 speed, it's just bulky, it doesn't hit very hard, and it doesn't have a very good move pool. So it's just really not that good. I've only seen a few people use it, and I've tried using it. It's, yeah, it's just not very good. Next, Reshiram. I think this thing is in the B tier. Really, I think both of these two are in the B tier, Reshiram and Zekrom. I think that these are two pretty solid Pokemon. They've got, you know, Reshiram has a really good special attack. Zekrom has a really good physical attack. The only thing that's tricky about them is these are another one that I believe have a base 90 speed. So it's kind of awkward. Do you want to run it under a Trick Room team or do you want to run it with like Tailwind or something like that? And really, I guess you could use it either way. I'd probably want to use it more as like a faster team. But what I know some people did with Reshiram is they use it with Sableye, I believe, and Sunny Day Sableye. So they set up the sun with Sableye and now Reshiram's doing even more damage with its fire attacks. Sableye also gives you some speed control with Quash. So it's a really good Pokemon, really strong Pokemon. I like its typing being a fire dragon. So it doesn't have very many weaknesses. I believe it's weak to ground and rock and dragon. I think that's it. So pretty good typing. Really high special attack. Um, it's a pretty solid Pokemon, again, if you have the right support around it. So same thing with Zekrom. Really high physical attack. It's maybe not quite as good as Reshiram because it's a physical attacker and therefore can be um, intimidated. But still super high attack. And again, if you have the right support around it, can be really good. I think people would run it with like Tapu Koko because Tapu Koko sets up the electric terrain to help boost its electric attacks. And Tapu Koko is also good because it's kind of like Regieleki where it can use Electroweb to slow down your opponents. So if you use like a speedier Zekrom and next to a Tapu Koko to use those electro webs and then you know set up the electric terrain it's a pokemon that could do really well so these are two solid pokemon i think definitely in the b tier yeah i've seen people come up with some pretty creative builds for these two pokemon next all of the different kirums i think that kirum black and kirum white are c tier pokemon the reason I think that just flat out Reshiram and Zekrom are better than Kirim Black and White is because Kirim Black and White are Ice and Dragon. So their typing still stays Ice and Dragon, even though they are fused with Zekrom and Reshiram, and I think that's what makes them not as good. So fusing them with Kirim makes their special attack and attack higher, but it makes their typing worse, and to me that's what makes them uh, lesser Pokemon. So I just don't think Ice is that great. So that makes them prone to fighting attacks, steel attacks. So Pokemon like Dialga and Solgaleo are just going to destroy these things. Urshifu does really well against them. So that's why I just don't think they're that good because of that Ice typing. So if I was going to use one of these, I would just use Reshiram or Zekrom. I think that's better then using them fused with Kirim, even though their attack is better. Kirim by itself is just, I would say, a D-tier Pokemon. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use this thing by itself, and I don't know why you would. Its typing is the same as these two. Its ability is worse because, you know, Kirim White and Kirim Black have the same abilities as Reshiram and Zekrom. So their abilities are better. They're um, going to have a better attack. Yeah, they're just, there's no reason that you would just use Kiram not fused. Next is Xerneas. I'm going to put Xerneas in the A tier. So Xerneas is really good if you can get off Geomancy. The problem is there are just a lot of good counters to Geomancy. We talked about Ho-Oh using Whirlwind. 
In Series 10, Whirlwind and Roar really picked up a lot for dealing with Xerneas. With Series 11 coming back, there's a lot of really good steel types when Dynamax is available. So you're going to start seeing Metagross again. You'll start seeing Kartana again. Those are two Pokemon that benefit a lot from um, Dynamax. So there's going to be even more steel types being brought back into the format. So that brings um, Xerneas down a little bit. Xerneas still is really good. If you're able to get off Geomancy, this thing is really hard to stop. It's just getting it set up and getting Geomancy off that is the tough part. But if you're able to get it going, obviously it's a super good Pokemon that's really hard to stop. I'm going to put Eveltal in the A plus tier. I might have a bit of a soft spot for Eveltal because I use Eveltal to qualify for Players Cup 4. So obviously I think it's a really good Pokemon. I used it with Assault Vest. The reason you're able to use it with an Assault Vest is because it has Dark Aura. So it basically has like a Life Orb for its Dark Attacks anyways. So you get that little bit of extra offensive output for your Dark Attacks. And then the Assault Vest just helps make it super bulky. And it's a Pokemon that you can easily use as your Dynamax Pokemon or as like a support Pokemon. So you put, with the Assault Vest, you put um, Oblivion Wing and Dark Pulse, and then you have Snarl and Sucker Punch. So Sucker Punch, you know, can one-shot a Calyrex Shadow. Also, Sucker Punch is just really good to have in endgame scenarios where you're not going to go first, so maybe you can get off a of Sucker Punch and win the game. So obviously it's always really good to have priority moves. Like I said, the Assault Vest helps make it super bulky. Also with Oblivion Wing, it's able to heal back hit points. So it's just a really good Pokemon. It has a lot of good things going for it. And yeah, I think Eveltal is really good. Alright, next is Zygarde. The 10% form I think is useless. I might be wrong about this, but I think that thing, yeah, is useless. Takes four times damage from ice. And it just, this 10% form, it's faster. But it has, like, no bulk to it at all. Yeah, I just, I don't see any reason that you would use this thing. So I would always use the base one over this 10% one every single time. I just don't know what this thing does. It's just faster, but it's super frail. But the normal form of Zygarde, the base form, I would put as a C tier Pokemon. You could argue for B now that Dynamax is available. It's just tough to get set up. If you get it set up, it can be really good. It's just hard to get it there. And also having that um, four times weakness to ice, just like Rayquaza, makes it tough. So they're under the same boat having that four times weakness to ice. But it has a super good ability with Power Construct. That makes it way bulkier as long as it can survive hits until it gets to under 50%. It does really good, obviously, with Comfe. So with a weakness policy next to Comfe, you can get this thing set up. Also, if you could use like a Follow Me user, like an Indeedee next to it, so that it can get off some coils and help get it bulkier and stronger. Coils, obviously, a great move to use. So it definitely has use. Under the Dynamax format, being able to Dynamax and use Max Quakes to boost special defense, that makes it even better. So if you let that thing get set up, it can be pretty much impossible to take out. It's just a matter of getting it set up that's difficult. But yeah, if you are able to get it set up, it can be a nightmare to deal with. So next is Solgaleo. I have Solgaleo as an A plus Pokemon. The reason I have Solgaleo up there is because it's got a great ability and a pretty good typing. So it's basically like a better Metagross, right? It's a Psychic Steel type. It gets like the same moves as Metagross. And it has essentially the same ability as Metagross. So you know how good Metagross can be under Dynamax. Solgaleo is even better. So its ability is Full Metal Body, which is the same thing as Clear Body. You can't lower its stats, so it can't be intimidated. 
so that makes it obviously a super valuable Pokemon. The only way that you can reduce its attack is by burning it. So if you run like a Tapu Fini next to it to set up a Misty Terrain so that it can't be burned. Now this Pokemon is just so good. And it's another one that you could use as a Trick Room Pokemon or you could use a faster version. Yeah, it's a base 97 speed. So you could use it as a faster Pokemon under like a Tailwind. A lot of time people are going to run Trick Room with it, you know, to deal with some of the faster Pokemon like Zacian and Calyrex Shadow. But this is just a super good Pokemon. Great ability, great typing. It gets a great move pool. Another one that you would use with a weakness policy. There's a lot of different ways to set off its weakness policy. You could use it with a Mimikyu to set up Trick Room and then Shadow Sneak. You could use it with Grimmsnarl to Sucker Punch it. A lot of ways to activate its weakness policy. And there's a lot of good partners for it. So it's just a really good Pokemon. Definitely belongs in the A plus tier. Lunala, on the other hand, is not very good. I don't know where to put this thing. I want to put Lunala in the D tier. Yeah, I mean, my gut's telling me D tier on this thing. I know some people have found ways to use this thing, but I don't know. It's just not good. And it takes four times damage from Dark and Ghost types, just like Calyrex Shadow, except it's slower than Calyrex Shadow. Its special attack isn't as good as Calyrex Shadow. I don't know. I just don't think it's very good. So the same thing for the Necrozma Dusk Wings. Maybe I'd put this thing in the C tier since it is a little bit bulkier and it hits a little bit harder. I feel like if I was going to use this, I'd rather have the Dusk Wings than just the Lunala. This is also slower. So it's a base 77 speed versus a base 97 speed. So it's better under Trick Room. So I feel like the Dusk Wings is, so when it's fused with Necrozma, I think that's better, but using it unfused just as Lunala, I feel like it's pretty useless. I would never use it like this, but I know there's some people who liked it. I think it's better um, with the Dusk Wings. The Dusk Main Solgaleo. This is either A or B tier. I'm going to throw it in the B tier. The reason it's not as good as Solgaleo is because it doesn't have that um, full metal body ability. So the prison armor ability is good because it reduces the damage from super effective moves. So it reduces the power of super effective moves by 25%. So that's good. It's a little bit slower, so it could be a better trick room Pokemon than Solgaleo. And it's a little bit stronger than Solgaleo. But ultimately, what makes Solgaleo better is that full metal body ability that you can't lower its attack. So the Duskmane Necrozma, you can intimidate it to lower its attack. You'll be able to lower any of its stats versus Solgaleo. You can't lower its stats at all because of full metal body. And that's why I would take Solgaleo over the Duskmane variant. Necrozma by itself is pretty useless. That's a D tier. If you're going to use it, you would fuse it with Solgaleo or Lunala. So I don't see why you would ever use this thing by itself. All right, and we're finally to the Gen 8 Pokemon. So the first one, Zacian, is obviously the other S tier Pokemon. These two are the best restricted by far. Zacian just does so much damage. Its ability is just ridiculous. It's probably the most broken ability that there is. Being able to raise its attack by one stage when it enters the battle, when it already has a super high attack, and it's already super fast. And then Behemoth Blade is just such a good move. It ignores that your the opponent is Dynamaxed, right? It does the same amount of damage to the Pokemon, whether it's Dynamaxed or not Dynamaxed. So it's a really good Pokemon. Obviously one of the best. It's something that you have to have counters for. Yeah, Zacian and Kyogre are clearly the two best Pokemon in the format. So just a normal Zacian without the Rusted Sword. I don't know why you would ever use this, so I don't know where to even rank this thing. It's still got the same ability, except it would just be Fairy instead of Fairy and Steel, so it's not going to be as good. It's also slower, so I don't know, maybe it would be like an A tier Pokemon. It's tough to tell, maybe I'll just throw it in the B tier. I don't know why you would ever use this, because it's not going to be as good without the sword. 
but I don't know. I'd be curious to see if someone tries this and how it works for them. For now, I'm just going to throw it in the B tier, so it's significantly worse than when it has the sword. But then you'd be able to give it something like, I don't know, a choice band or a life orb or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that could be good. I'll leave it here in the B tier. Zamazenta, I'm going to put in the C tier. It's just not great. It's obviously super bulky, and the main way that people use it is Howl. They'll use it alongside a good physical attacker and use Howl, and we've seen that be successful. It's a solid strategy. It's just nothing great. The other thing it gets is it gets coaching. People usually use Howl over coaching because that's going to boost Zamazenta's attack as well as its, um, as its allies' attack, but I don't know. It's just a decent support Pokemon, but it's not great. So Zamazenta without the shield, I'm going to also put in the C tier. I messed around with this a little bit in Series 10. So it would just be a fighting type. It would still get that defense boost on entry because it still has the same ability. And what I did with this thing in Series 10 was I gave it Choice Band. And that made it kind of interesting. Except basically what it did is it made it a little bit lesser version of Urshifu. With Choice Band, it dealt out a lot of damage. It's just Urshifu is better. Alright, next is Eternatus. I don't really know what to do with this thing. Um, it was really good in Series 10 without Dynamax. But now that Dynamax is back, it's not as great. So I think I'm just going to throw it in the C tier. It does have some use. The Dynamax Cannon is obviously a really good move. It's just... It's not as good of a move as Behemoth Blade. Um, it obviously has an immunity against fairies. And if there is Misty Terrain up, that lowers the damage output of Dynamax Cannon by 50%. So it's not as good as a Zamazenta or a Zacian. But it still has a really high special attack. It can be really bulky. I know people use it with Cosmic Power sometimes to just make it super bulky. Other people will just use it with like a life orb to deal out a ton of damage. So it can have use. It can be a solid Pokemon. It's just not extraordinary. So the two Calyrexes, Ice and Shadow, I think are both A tier Pokemon. So they're both really good, obviously, in very different ways. So Calyrex Ice, super bulky, great trick room Pokemon. And another one that when you run it alongside a Mimikyu can be just outstanding. So that's its most common partner. It's also really good with Oranguru. So if you're able to use Oranguru to get off a Trick Room and then use Instruct to get off multiple Glacial Lances, it can be really good. So yeah, just a really strong Trick Room Pokemon. But its downside is that it's a Trick Room Pokemon, right? So it's incredibly slow. So if your opponent has a way to deny your Trick Room or to stall out your Trick Room, now it's not as great. It's obviously going to be not very good against a Dark Urshifu. Yeah, it definitely has its weaknesses. It can be intimidated to lower its attack. It's going to be really weak to, you know, Steel, Fire, Dark. So it's got some good counters to it. But just its natural bulk, if, especially if you Dynamax this thing and you put a weakness policy on it, you're just able to do so much damage and survive so many different attacks. Yeah, it, it's a really good Pokemon. The reason it's not higher as an A plus or an S is because of how many different counters there are to it. And the same thing is true for Calyrex Shadow. The reason it's not higher is because there's so many counters to it and because of how frail it is. So it's super fast, super high special attack, but it is incredibly frail. Takes four times damage from dark and ghost attacks. So, you know, it doesn't want to face up against a dark Urshifu, a Grim Snarl, or Incineroar. You know, it doesn't do well against any of those Pokemon, and those are all really common Pokemon. But if you're able to get rid of its counters, it's incredibly powerful. And once you get it rolling, it can just be so good. So both of these Pokemon, if you're able to get them set up and get rolling, they can be unstoppable. 
It's just a matter of getting them started. So lastly, just Calyrex by itself. Again, this is a D-tier Pokemon because there's no reason to use this without Glacier or Spectre. So if you're going to be using Calyrex, you're going to fuse it with one of these two Pokemon. You're not going to use it by itself. All right, so that is it for my list here. Obviously, let me know what you guys think. If you think somebody should be higher or lower, let me know in the comments. Personally, I'm excited for Series 11 to come back. I'm someone who likes Dynamax. I think Dynamax is fun. I think it adds a little extra something to the game. You know, it, it throws in some extra strategy, and it also makes some of these Pokemon a lot more usable. It felt like in Series 10 that Zacian and Kyogre were just super overwhelming. And then Pokemon like Regieleki, Urshifu, Rillaboom were just like so good under Series 10. And now that Dynamax is back, it helps to even the playing field a little bit with some of those Pokemon. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments as far as the tier list, if I miss something up. And let me know your thoughts on Series 11. Are you guys excited for Series 11 to be back? Or did you prefer Series 10? Yeah, let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Obviously, that helps a lot. So. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time.